This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This episode of Wrestling Mayhem Show is dedicated to somebody that's more of a fan of the show. He was a friend of us all, Tregar, Trey Garcia. Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Just, just wait. Ladies and gentlemen, live from the Sorgatron Media Studios in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, it's Sorgatron. It's a Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 585. Tuesdays we've been uh, gathering here to celebrate professional wrestling. We got a great one. It's, the pre-show has been amazing already, so we got, who knows where we're going to go with this. First of all, in the studio is Larry. What's up? Mutilator Larry on the Twitter, if you want to follow him, because he's so active on there. Yep. I'm, I do lots of stuff on the Twitters. And also keeping us abreast of everything. Get a little closer. Love the mic. Yeah. It's love a good the, mic. No, no. Get, get, it's the a love, good mic. No, get close. Hello. Don't, Hello. Don't pet the mic. Get, Hello. Get, there you go. Hello. Talk to the people. Talk to the people. Love the people. Good evening, people. <laughs> And also, we got some very special guests. We're going to be, of course, recording an Indie Mayhem show with them after this that you guys can check out on the feed at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Locked and loaded. Mm. Hey. Hey, Duke Davis and Gannon Jones Jr. joining us. The best dressed guests we've ever had mm. on the show, I think. Too clean. Too clean. Too, Too clean. clean. Oh, oh, there you go. Too clean. Mm. There you go. There's a true tag team right there. Um, and, of course, we talked about your outfits on, on, on gold. Did you? For, yeah, we, uh, yeah, no, we, you did. Oh, we you, did. You did. You didn't talk about it enough. I feel like you guys could have went a little bit more. We can do a deep dive. We can do a fashion show later. I, whatever you guys want to do. Ooh, I and by the way, most recently, uh, as uh, if you guys are on the video, IWC Tag Team Champions That's debuting nice. and, uh, and looking, good, uh, looking good on the couch over there. So thank you, thank you guys so much for joining us. Yeah, for sure. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it. Awesome. And of course, everybody, uh, you can check out everything I've said at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. Follow us on Twitter at Mayhem Show. Uh, and check us out. Uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music for podcasting, and the video versions on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook and YouTube page. Live stream on the Facebook or uh, short link is live.wrestlingmayhemshow.com. You can get the latest of whatever's going live here, 10 p.m. Eastern time or uh oh that was here in the bottle i'm like what was happening <laughs> so uh, it's all right it's all right um and lost my place you can also drop us a line at that email address Thank you. We got one. We got one. Good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com or the hotline of 412-206-WMS0. And uh, thank you to our Patreon supporters, including our fan of the show level, uh, Bo Diggity. Woo. Woo. Mm. Ed Burke, Alex Cars, uh, Power to the Smarks on the Twitter, Bobby F. J. Town at the Pocket Club $5 level, Tina Keys, Brandon Mina, and Christopher Bishop, and at the Pizza Club $10 level, we're looking for you, Billy F. and Johnson. He's supposed to be in the studio. We, we hope he's on route. We hope he's brought some Tim Hortons from West Virginia. Mm. Uh, we'll find out, hopefully, uh, before the end of the show. Uh, and so let's get into it. Oh, also, thanks to our streaming partner, the405media.com, for carrying in this mayhem. You can check us out on the stream there. Every evening for the next week, this mayhem that we record will be every evening at 9 p.m. Pacific time, midnight Eastern, if you want to catch up on the mayhem or re-listen or re-love the show and laugh along again because you know all the jokes. Um, it's going to be one of those shows, guys. Uh, so the big news of this week seems to come out of Triple Mania, um, which I strangely was watching on Twitch TV. Did you guys know they were streaming on Twitch TV? No, no idea. They were streaming. The, yeah, and this is this is basically their WrestleMania, right? Yeah, the biggest show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I know DJ Z of uh, IWC alum uh, was a part of that big stadium down there in uh, Mexico City, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, every time I tuned in, I say there was like ten people in the ring and Jeff Jarrett, and it got weird. Jeff Jarrett was there. <laughs> yeah, Jeff Jarrett came out, <laughs> wow. and he was like, it was like he was handing out cards 
to everybody, which feels like somebody else's gimmick that's here locally. But, uh, you know. Like business cards. Yeah, like business cards. It was wow. like handing kids. Like, I'm like, is he looking like. He's looking is for he re- production staff. Recruiting? Was he Maybe. handing out He's like. probably recruiting. Start him young. Please yeah. watch Global Force or something. something. Uh, maybe. It's a, um, it's a $2 off drink coupon. Uh, there you go. That's how you get them in the building. Mm-hmm. That's it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're already in the building. Uh, <laughs> but so you get them to stay for the main event. The so. big. Yeah, there you go. Give them the kids. <laughs> That's the, exactly. Uh, but the biggest news coming out of that, unfortunately, is the situation with Sexy Star and uh, and Rosemary. Um, and, and I saw the clip. Apparently, uh, had her in an arm bar and and and, and intentionally dislocated her arm. Um, I know a lot of wrestlers have been coming out, like everybody from, uh, I've seen Cody Rhodes and, uh, you know, a, a whole list of people having their statements are basically, you know, all kind of, you know, dismayed by this ugliness, you mm-hmm. know, that, that happened and, and, and what that means and everything. Uh, appropriate. We have you guys here, you know, two guys, you know, obviously in the ring, you know, um, have you guys been keeping up on that? And what do you think of the situation going on? I have, that's, uh. Yeah, I think it's crazy. Um, the way I look at it, the way I think about it is um, when you're in there with someone, um, you know, you're, you're trusting them with your body. So um, I really don't think that there's a place for people like that in our business at mm-hmm. all. Um, it's, a, it's a shame. But, uh, yeah, so and I think that's really the general consensus out here the most wrestlers have been speaking out that it's just it's inappropriate you know mm-hmm. so i'm pretty sure everyone kind of feels the same way except for a sexy star I guess. yeah and that's what i was about to say is like, <laughs> it kind of sucks like you know you knew she knows what she was doing mm-hmm. so it's like you know you you're in there in the ring t- someone's trusting you with your body once one more time but it's like just own up to it you know you know what i mean i think it would have been a lot it wouldn't be this big of a outcry if she just owned up to it instead of like throwing excuses out there for why she did it. Yeah, the the the, the an excuse I heard was like she felt like she was being targeted in there and something like that. It was a four way uh, with with a few different girls involved. Too, yeah, right. Yeah, and well, I don't know how you feel about uh, it's just weird. Like if you're in a ring and you break. Damage someone's arm, or say you miss something, or whatever. Like, just say, "Hey, my bad, my fault." You know. At the end of the day, like we, we still gotta, you know, make this happen. Like that's I what I don't like about it. I mean, things happen whether you get carried away with something, right, or or misjudgment or something. In, in the end, right, and, and it could have been that, but and and you know, and yeah, I don't know, I don't know, you know, beyond that, what you can say. Yeah, I think that was a discussion that maybe they should have uh, had after the fact mm-hmm. if she thought she was being targeted mm-hmm. or or whatever she she said. I don't even know really how true that is, but um I, f- I don't feel like how she handled that situation was uh, professional <laughs> yeah, at all. She's so. going to be out now that lady's going to be out of work. Yeah. Yeah, no one's going to yeah. book her. Like, yeah. Which is not Well, for- no, I mean the late the the Are oh, you talking about uh who, who's she in Rosemary. 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 Yeah. Rosemary. No, oh, okay. She's going to be out of work, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And stuff. So, okay. like, and, l- and last I knew, Rosemary is somebody that has been very involved with even the current state of uh, Impact Wrestling. So, and whatever you think of Impact Wrestling, I mean, that's yeah, a steady gig for one thing. Yeah, yeah. and kind of screws tr- tr- throws a wrench in whatever they're doing too. Right. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. And it's actually star somebody that you know I know got to know via Lucha Underground. She's somebody that's been getting a lot of press. And man, that's kind of a full stop on all that stuff for her. Mm-hmm. Negative press now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So no one wants to touch her, but someone will. Someone will book her. That's mm-hmm. the thing about wrestling. Like someone will book her, and it's going to make it. You know, it's going to make headlines again. Mm-hmm. So it'll be a reoccurring thing. Someone will book her because people will pay to go boo her after what she did. Yeah. So <laughs> there's no there's no way you're gonna blackball. No. It's no union. No, no, definitely not. It, it's, good yeah. word to use, though. <laughs> it's a good blacklisting and blackballing people and excommunicating them. That's a good word to use, but mm. it's not going to happen. Kind of goes to the idea. I forget, you know, it was Steve Carino or somebody saying there needs to be like some kind of wrestlers union. I think, actually, I think it was one of the Shane Douglas's rants I was listening to one time that like that needs to happen. It's yeah. like, say, hey, these promoters are good. These wrestlers are good and not, you know, kind of bullshit, right? Raven actually said it too. He wanted to make a union mm-hmm. because he was uh, suing WWE. But like I said, 
you're not it's not gonna happen there's, there's too much too many, out, too many moving parts yeah, yeah there's too, too many there's many too much that that needs reined in there's too many kind of fly by night promoters and you know everybody can get trained these days right mm-hmm. so yes. in the long run so you never know um and aside from that, uh, some interesting stuff. I know a lot of people had a lot of opinions about uh, uh, John Cena this week. Uh, uh, Mainstream Matt, in, in particular, was sharing with us uh, just went as a topic suggestion about it. Cena is is all time Mike assassin. Uh, really kind of dressing down Roman Reigns uh, this week on Raw. Um, did you? Did, uh, I know Aaron, you were or Larry. What show are we on? Uh, <laughs> you were watching that. What did you think of that during that, that segment? I think Roman got annihilated. <laughs> <laughs> I think he forgot his lines and got flustered and just, yeah. <laughs> did you hear what you just said? He forgot his lines. I hate that. Why? Lines. Yeah, mm-hmm. he has lines. You know they have lines. But that's the thing I hate because Cena's, of course, it's scripted, right. whatever. They have to say, they have to you know, hit certain points. But Cena's good. Yeah, mm-hmm. he's from he's from that kind of like that because he's been doing it for so long. It's just like he knows what he's doing. Yeah, so he could basically be unscripted. He probably is. And terrible. I don't. I don't think. I, honestly, I think they probably gave him points. Mm-hmm. How do you give? I don't see him saying, "Oh, this is a script." But he he did his John Cena thing, man. Look, shout out to Roman Reigns. That's my dude. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. I love Roman Reigns. Um, I thought he held his own in there. He had to. He had to. I mean, uh, I mean, like I guess if you're if you're rating it, yeah. I mean, Cena got the better of him, but who doesn't? Cena. C- get Cena the did of? the same thing to him that he was doing during the Rock feud to get that going, you right? Know? And it, mm-hmm. and it peaked mm-hmm. interest because it's peaking interest now for this match. Yeah, absolutely. I just but I think Roman Roman just he didn't deliver like the Rock would deliver. You no, know? Like, you're right. Um, and and I feel like the points that Roman hit on were very like. I don't know what a like a ten year old would say. Like you suck. Mm-hmm. Well, like, you suck too. Yeah, like stuff yeah. like that. that. That's why I really feel like he kind of flustered and failed. Whereas Cena, he hit more of the points. Like the reason I'm still here, the reason I'm still doing this, is because guys like you mm-hmm. won't step up or can't step up to dethrone me or to, to take my place. So. I thought his his points were a little bit more valid, but um. there were there was a, there was a point where we're watching. I think we mentioned it on the raw wrap up last night where it seemed like so. This is the point where where Cena and Roman were reading internet wrestling commenters like responses, basically <laughs> you know? trolling. Like they, they, that was yeah right. They yeah. they were trolling each other. It's like <laughs> wait, this is all the stuff I read on Twitter, you know, like right. from the fans, right? <laughs> yeah, and they were just kind of like they just like channeled all of that at mm-hmm. each other, which was interesting. It was very, uh, and that's the thing. It was like real, and I think Kurt Angle made a post about it, like a legit shoot. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, uh, if like I was watching, I was like, ooh, it felt that way. Ooh, mm-hmm. Kurt was grinning like he was in the front row of the audience yeah. the entire yeah. time. I was like, oh, I can't believe it. Kind of, it kind of <laughs> made me think about the New Day versus Usos uh, mm-hmm. rap battle when yeah. they were taking out real stuff that actually happened mm-hmm. and saying it. Like we knew, we knew about it, but it's one of those we don't talk about at WWE. Right, keep right. It hush. Like references to the page sex videos. Yeah, and yeah. then you know, with the Roman and Cena thing, it was like the same thing. And you know what? I, I'm not trying to kill Roman. Roman did a great job. I felt his anger though. Like he I was felt, mad. I I felt like, hey, I want to flip a table over for him. Like I want to, I want to break something. He, for he him. got mad. Like you know, when someone's talking about you and you have nothing to say. Yeah. Or, or they're, you're you're in school and they're making fun of your shoes or your outfit, and you're just like, ah, oh, you can't say anything to them because they're wearing nice shoes and they have a nice outfit. So you're right. just frustrated. I feel like that's how Roman Reigns got. But you feel like it's one of those where Roman's like hits backstage, is like, oh, I should have said that. Like, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I should have commented on his stupid orange shirt. Dang. Right. And the Usos part, like, bro, why do you say this? Like, but I mean, it was one of those. It was one of those moments. I think they had a moment. I don't. I didn't really care for anything else that night. Like that happened, I was like, that was a big moment, mm-hmm. and I'm going to watch the match because of it. I think there's an interesting uh, comment that uh, Matt had made of you know he's trying to think of like five other people that he kind of considers these Mike assassins like that. You know, Triple H, Paul Heyman, that can just kind of lay into something like that. You don't get that, and and, and I have kind of the, I feel like we kind of get the pipe bomb moments. Like once a month now, 
on these shows, you know, between the Miz coming out and, and doing things. It has that kind of It's losing its prestige. Yeah, has that softened it? Like that was like, oh burn, you know. I don't think every, it did for that one. Not, Not for, for that, that one. one. <laughs> no. That you know, like, people went and they couldn't wait for that to happen too. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. they couldn't. Yeah. Like, and what Miz said last week, if you heard that was a that was a real reaction from the fans when he said, you know, I've always get looked over, where's my moment? And everyone reacted to that. Like we just got to look for the, you got to look, instead of being like a big moment, it's like a small moment. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like Miz had his small moment. It just didn't have to do with like what he did in the ring. It was what he was saying that mm-hmm. drew people to like, but okay, that's usually Miz, That's right. usually his thing though. Like people don't really like remember his matches as much as his promos. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. It's, he knows how to bring people in. Yeah. Yeah. Well, even like what well, we saw the commercial and we're like, wow, the commercial is Jeff Hardy and yeah, in the Miz. Miz next week, yep. and, and no matter what Miz was doing, just like, oh wow, we're doing like this is this is the important thing next week, really? You know, yeah, and, it's, and, not, it's not Lesnar and Strowman, it's not right. Cena and Roman Reigns, right? Right, it just seemed yeah. seemed really odd, and I'm sure going into this week, it was a contract signing the entire time, probably right. Uh, yeah. If you were looking at the yeah. ads, uh, I, I can't recall from the week before, but um, yeah, but, they kept hyping that. Uh, the contract signing. That was pretty much it. Yeah. Well, there's the women's match too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But they hyped it so much that you forgot about the women's match. Yeah, that's true. They did. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh, this is... Oh, I forgot that was happening. I watched the women's (laughs) match. It was a good match, but I totally forgot it happened until... All you kept thinking about was like, man, I can't wait to look at Twitter tomorrow. Like, (laughs) man, I know Dave... I know Dave Meltzer is going to go crazy. What's Mm -hmm. Brian Alvarez going to say? That's... Your mentality is like that, but... They didn't mm. have a good match at the end. That's a good uh, comment. Uh, Teen is in the chat saying uh, Kevin Owens is a good one at this too, because mm. he'll yeah he'll just lay right into somebody and he and he's good. He's one of those that's definitely good on his feet. With he's good. Too. Yeah. You know he reacts to the crowd. He reacts to things that go off script. He's like and everything feels kind of authentic out of him too. Yeah, he takes his time when he's saying something too. Mm-hmm. He doesn't jump right to he doesn't it. Doesn't rush it. Yeah, yeah. He's another good one for sure. All around good guy. Good. Uh, the other big thing that happened this week um, was the May Young Classic, and now my phone has died. Um, uh, Larry, I know you watched it. Did you guys? Yeah. Did you guys pick up on any of it? I did not. I did not. Yeah, they did drop at like midnight, like four hours of wrestling. <laughs> so there's that, uh, Larry. And we 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 did a live stream last night. I know uh, Mad Mike was a part of that too. And uh, and it was it was it went pretty fast for four hours of wrestling. Yeah, which was kind of well, nice. like they're like they're like forty five minutes each or something yeah. like that. Yeah, forty five to like yeah. forty eight ish or something. So, yeah, like and that. it was one it was one match after another. So it's. Mm-hmm. There That's wasn't good. like anything in between. Yeah, about it. eight matches an episode, and it was yeah. basically the entire sixteen matches of the first round. Yeah, so wow. we already like just kind of dropped all at once, and actually dropped earlier in the day too. Um, so, guys, let us know your thoughts of that in the chat room too. But uh, Larry, what kind of stuck out for you? Um, I don't know. It was there were good matches in every episode. I mean, it, I don't know. It wasn't fast paced and real like technical like the cruiserweight classic was but it was still it was i don't know it was entertaining it was entertaining Mm. um there were i i got i enjoyed each episode like that you know sometimes there's like episodes of raw or smackdown or whatever they're like oh man this is a total waste of my time right (laughs) like there were there were some there were at least two good matches in each show Mm -hmm. which was that was enough for me you know like that pulled through there were a few matches that were eh, but like there were other ones that kind of made up for it. So there's definitely I know we kept compared it to the Cruiserweight Classic. Yeah, was the big thing, and, and, and it's not. It's that's unfair. Yeah, I think it's in, not. In it's not the run. same thing, right? Because I mean that was like a style of wrestling. I mean a yeah. lot of styles involved, right? You know, and um, you know we were like, well, this is kind of encompasses an entire genres, genders division. So yeah. you're going to have a little bit of everything, right? So it, it seemed like it was pretty widespread. Yeah, I mean, it, it was kind of like it was kind of like the UK tournament, more um, just with like the diversity of all the competitors. Um, it was real he- gimmick heavy. It was really, really gimmick heavy. But, yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. It was good. I think like there there were some matches that I just didn't like, like that. Who's that MMA lady? Uh, Shana, ba- Shana Basler. Yeah, I, did I believe. Not like that match. Um, and she's been really big. Of course, Shimmer, the, the large Shimmer footage when they were looking at a lot of these girls. And uh, she's big in AIW. Yeah. Of course, uh, part of the Four Horsemen, Ronda Rousey and company. Um, legit MMA 
uh, uh, person. And, uh, you know, I, I, I completely disagree with you that, on that. That was, that was like my least favorite match out of the entire thing. You, just, I think she, they just like buried the lady she wrestled. Like she, like, cause she wasn't wrestling. Mm-hmm. She like she was an MMA lady, basically doing what Ronda Rousey did at WrestleMania. Well, even her opponent, like, who knew, I think it was jujitsu. You know, like she was doing like like stuff you see in UFC. Like she was on her back and she was doing you know the kind of the leg defense thing. Yeah, which really kind of surprised me. Like it was more it looked like a fight. Yeah, it looked more UFC. But if you if you looked at like their their video packages, her opponent was like like she was having actual wrestling matches, you mm-hmm. know. And like they were really like her pro her uh pa- like her video package was great like all the stu- the highlights and stuff, and like she didn't get to do any of that stuff in the match mm-hmm. like it, it just seemed like a total squash match just to build up, uh, what Shayna was that, was that her yeah Shayna yeah her name. like I don't know, I I just felt like the other lady like deserved a fair opponent you mm-hmm. know because every other match was like, it was just like a clean slate that mm-hmm. it it felt more credible i guess it, it felt like like i i i, th- I thought i saw this in the cwc where if it, it felt like you know there were like like they booked jobbers into this yeah. tournament yeah like a lot right and you're just like mm, that's the one that's going the, right. like like if they show like a match where like like they had a few matches in nxt you know and it's just like mm, they're not going anywhere this right. other person is the feature person right like, like right. you kind of got that sense as you went through something like this okay so um you know candice LeRae featured really heavy with yeah that. she was great um we, there was a certain point where we're like hey everybody that was in tna was losing uh, <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, me and Yim, of course, changing that, had a, a tremendous match. And Sarah Logan, the former uh, Crazy Mary, I was excited to see her do something with the country girl. Oh, okay. All right. Like, I'm really upset about the country twang thing they're doing with her right now. But anyways, um, but no, had a really good match there. I thought it was really good for her. And, and uh, you know, seeing Mia Yim. I haven't seen Mia Yim wrestle since she did, like, a college fight fest in IWC. Which one was like, she? Um she's the one that had uh she was kind of uh asian looking she had the fan no kind of asian looking (laughs) i'm just guessing that mia yim is asian i would assume that's a very she's she was she 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 used to refer herself as like blazing or something like in her tagline or something but then there was lord tensai so we can't really yeah yeah yeah, there's that Mm. so um okay uh, there you go, but uh, but no, she was doing. She, she was cute. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you can't uh, say yes or no, Mike. Yeah, well, my wife's right here, so <laughs> you can say if someone's cute or not. You just described it to a T. There I don't you go. remember that match though. To be honest. But I but again, somebody I haven't seen wrestle since she was like on a show here, like probably seven years ago, and like how badass she's gotten. It was pretty cool to yeah. see. That's awesome. The so, um, Tessa Blanchard and uh, Kari Sane match was awesome that mm-hmm. was a good match I that last episode had probably the largest concentration of good matches out of all of them uh, definitely definitely um, um mike pulled out uh, um that the uh, um carrie sane yeah was it um the only japanese competitor in mm-hmm. there uh she was one of the black lotus tribe in lucha underground oh yeah yeah so very different character um and also i kind of made the joke is like so pentagon jr is going to come out and try to break her arm right <laughs> <laughs> i mean but hey, if that's the entrance for Pentagon Junior in WWE, I'm down with that idea. <laughs> I don't know what his like WWE name is going to be because I'm sure that's not happening. They're just going to get rid of the Junior. The Junior? Yeah. Pentagon Vince, Vince doesn't like Juniors. Pen- Pentagon, Pentagon Gray, Pentagon, know. you know, something like that. What's another name for Pentagon? <coughs> They're just going to pick a different shape, right? Yeah. Like Hex- Hexagon. Hex- Hexagon Junior? That works. Hexagon I, feel, Junior. I feel like that's a thing that's out there. Octagon Junior. Octagon, Octagon Junior. Junior. It's two MMA. Yeah. It is. It's, it's two MMA. Right. Like Shane is. Shane is Shane like has that locked down. Like a link manager should be Octagon. I don't, know. Okay. I don't like that lady. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else that stuck out for you, Larry? Um, oh, what was it in the first? There was um, who's the, the lady from New Zealand? New Zealand. Um, crap, I can't forget. I can't remember her name. Is she the um, one that took on the Indian girl? I think so. 
This is where we're at. Like, um, yeah, this, the, this is uh, where we're at. And, like we don't remember any names. And I got yeah. I got to pull up. The she list. was from what country now? Right, the Asian girl, the Indian girl, or Dakota the Kai? <laughs> <laughs> Dakota Kai. Dakota Kai. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Her and then um, I liked the match with. Um, uh, I got to pull up. I really can't remember any of their names. <laughs> but. Uh, anyways, it was, uh, that was a good showcase. You got to see Candice LeRae in action. Which, Jab- Jazzy Gabbert. Jazzy and Gabbert. Abby Late. That match was oh, awesome. Oh, jeez. That match was great. Like, it had a un, like, I didn't expect her to lose at all. That was my big thing from this, because I, I feel like if they sign, like, half the girls from this, like, the women's division has, like, serious monsters. Like, it's not just like, hey, here's all these, yeah. here's all these Alexa Blisses. And there's Nia Jax that's like twice as big as them, right? right? Like if you throw like a Nia Jax and like a Jazzy Gabbert and um, the one from India that kind of wrestles like Great Kali, uh, it's like you you have like the one that wrestles like Great Kali. She did. Piper Nevin was Stiff. awesome, also. Piper Nevin that was a good match. You know, uh, um, like you can have like a pretty good like large women's like you know like. I don't want to say Braun Strowman and Brock, but right. you know, but but still, yeah. like something like that. That's kind of yeah, powerhouses, yeah. Yeah, like a lot of powerhouse stuff in a women's division, which is not something you think of from this. Yeah. And they showcased at least three of them in this, yeah. and yeah. and it wasn't all of them just like crushing, you know, little girls, and that was it. So, no, no, I mean it was they they were monster athletes, but they. None of the matches were just like they weren't just squash matches, you mm-hmm. know. Like it, it was a good match. Like everybody, whoever was the underdog in those matches, like found a creative way to win or lose, you yeah. know, or just to have the match. So I don't know. It was entertaining. Good mix of stuff. Yeah. So May Young Classic. I believe uh, there's going to be another batch of episodes next Monday. Yeah, I think they're doing again. like one round at a time. Basically, yeah. they're dumping one round. So at we a did time. we did do a watch party for it. Once we kind of know. We're going to try to do, and just in case they release them early, because they did release them earlier in the day, mm. and it was supposed to be like after Raw, they were going to dump them. And, uh, and it was funny because everybody was making the joke that uh, they put Hog Wild, WCW Hog Wild, on the live stream, <laughs> like back to back, all the, all of them <clears throat> instead. And it's just like, oh, yeah, they put it on the live stream. So everybody definitely will go watch Mate Young, right? Mm-hmm. Right. So. Smart. You know, I went and watched Hog Wild. Uh, really, <laughs> I did. Well, well, I I wanted to sit there where we, we planned. I was going to watch it with Mad Mike on the live stream right. afterwards because that's when we thought it was coming out. So we're going to have a, a, the double times just in case it comes out early until we find official times. Uh, so hopefully we can do that. And, and it's gonna, it's it's kind of interesting that we're going to be over with this in like three weeks. Yeah, yeah, they're going to do the uh, finals live on SmackDown Le- and- or on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's not after. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's on SmackDown. I thought it was a special after, like, like where 205 Live. No, it's is. it's like it's one match. It's N- the, nice. It's a final match. So it's just going to be a feature attraction yeah. on there. That's cool. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Like, I could be wrong. We can check the details of that. Chat room will, chat room will get us on this one. Um, so check that out. And uh, we, 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 we've been putting some threads on the Wrestling Mayhem Show Facebook page. So are you guys, you know, you guys haven't, uh, uh, pick, you know, watched it yet, but have you paid attention to who's in it? Like you have any favorites in the tournament? Um, I, I, I saw the bracket, um, the, the one person that stood out to me and if they, did they do the entire first round? Yeah, they yeah. did like, yeah, they did all through 16 matches. So what happened to Marty Bell? Marty Bell lost. Yeah, she lost. Yeah. All right, well then I'm good I'm, match. I'm who'd not she, interested who'd in Who'd she face? It was, that's who I was pulling for. Marty Bell, yeah. Was was she, did she face? I think she faced um, uh, Rachel Evers. She Is did. that right? Yeah, yeah. the Rachel Ellering uh, on the Indies. Rachel yeah. Evers, yeah. So wait, she's not using a uh, Ellering? Mm-mm. No, but they definitely talk about the How relation. You know? <laughs> but meanwhile, Tessa Blanchard is Tessa Blanchard, and we're going into the, with the Blanchard thing. Okay. So. But oh, yeah. right. I'll have to look at the updated bracket. Yeah, um, I do think though, all in all, that this is awesome for women's wrestling. I think it kind of showcases and puts a spotlight on women's wrestling, which is really cool because yeah. you know, obviously that doesn't happen mm-hmm. uh, as often as it should. So I feel like regardless of who wins, it brings attention and uh, you know some buzz around you know female wrestling. So mm-hmm. I think that's awesome. Yeah, it definitely perked my ears up though when I saw it. Man, young classic. Yeah, that's definitely cool. Definitely want to see what's going on. I just we, haven't sat down and watched any. 
any women's wrestling yet. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's also interesting that the, that WWE is interested in doing binge-worthy content like this, right? Um, and that was something I think uh, I saw Justin Labar um, sharing from the Triple H uh, call recently, mm-hmm. where they were just like, "Yeah, we're trying to treat it like a Netflix. People want to watch them in one thing instead yeah. of like the CWC was spread over like two and a half months, maybe, yeah, two months ish, maybe, and, and it was just like you know." It was kind of hard to like. Okay, let's wait for the next one. I mean, everything was great by itself, and it, everything really kind of um, held up. I I'm, feel. I'm wondering if people just lost interest. You know, like just doing a week. Maybe thing, the numbers they they saw them go. It's like, oh, we'll catch up next week or something like right. that. So if you just dump them all at once, then you can dump them like, hey, here's four hours. Here's fresh, four hours. Yeah, here's four hours. Everybody's talking about whatever they got attracted to. Yeah, and I mean, there was definitely like about the third episode was the only point where we're like, "Eh, I could take or leave this this match." Yeah, you know, it was like this just feels like random ladies match I'd see on NXT that didn't really matter much. I think one of the things that put like one of the few things that put me off on that thing on that show was the commentating. I didn't. Oh no, I did not like the commentating. Oh no, you're gonna. I think you're gonna have to fight some people here. I know. Okay. In the chat, uh, there was actually a comment about that. I want to go back to. I think it was Tina that said it. She says the commentary style was more methodical for May Young Classic, not as loud. If she's choosing the right word, and and yeah, I mean, it was. It it felt like they were filling it in like they do in golf. (laughs) Like oh my god, right there she just did a yeah lock takeover yeah basically, and I know I know they did a lot of. They did a lot of. Um, we, we need to do that. So, like, somebody needs to do yeah. that at some point. It feels like an indie wrestling. If you look thing. closely. She will do a drop toe hold. Oh, beautiful. Oh, awesome. I, I think they did a, lo- a lot of um, voiceover <laughs> recording for a lot of it. Because mm-hmm. I, remember, I remember JR was saying on his podcast that they had to do um, a lot of voiceover work for for it. So I'm not, I'm not sure if just like the original stuff just wasn't that yeah, great, or they, they just were, wanted to put different. Because they were there for sure. Because they did the live. Yeah, they did like, a live. They, they oh, do the parade of champions. Yeah, they, right. And they did a, they did a live recording like mm-hmm. for the commentating, and then they went back and did like they said they did like two full days of voiceover wow. work for it for their commentating. Because you can kind of tell because you can tell on NXT where like they kind of transition from like this introductory thing into it, and you can tell the the, the recordings a little different if mm-hmm. you're listening closely. And I, I could got that a couple of times too. But but there was things like Naomi was in the crowd and maybe they referenced her being a champion at the time because it was last month. Yeah, they had okay. they had a, somebody pop up for like every match. Like yeah, Nakamura popped up um, and hugged that random guy. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's like just two things in commentary that bothered me. One is when they're talking about something completely off, off topic. Mm-hmm. Like there's two people, you mm-hmm. know, John and Ryan in the ring fighting, and they're talking about Peter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like it has nothing to do with that. That or bothers me. They're talking about something on the on the network. Yeah, that's or just something, or something like, like that. that. Yeah, to me, yeah. like they should be interested in the match. That and then whenever that same point, they don't seem like vested in it. You know, mm-hmm. they're not excited about what's going on. Because yeah. mm-hmm. I feel like the the commentary is just as much a part of the show as is the match that's going on, especially if you're watching it on TV. Well, the people who were watching it live, they were having a great time. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. you know, like you could mm-hmm. tell in the crowd, they yeah. were having a blast. But it's like. When you're just watching it on TV, it's like it kind of kills it a little bit, yeah. you know. Absolutely, and, and it, it, you know, it was a little bit more, you know, I'm, I, you know, I think CWC it was um, Morrow and Daniel Bryan getting just super excited about everything that was happening in front of them. But yeah, you know, it was and that might have been it was incredible, it so fast-paced good. stuff going on yeah. and varied and everything like that. Um, so there was like kind of a genuine energy to that between the two of them. And for this, it was more, we really need to tell what these girls are about because it seems like there's less, like, we need to get the story over yeah. more than them kind of telling it in the ring. People, people weren't already invested in Wait, weren't, their matches. JR did the commentary, right? Yeah, yeah. JR and Who Lita. Who was his partner? Lita. Lita. Oh. Yeah. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lita was not half bad in this. I got to say it's not <laughs> Lita wasn't half good in it either. Oh, but. oh, <laughs> oh. <all right. laughs> the JR saying, Lita mix. The JR Lita mix. Although it seemed like Lita had a personal conversation with everybody in the tournament. Well, somehow. They, they that was both a little did. weird. They, she spent, t- they spent like two whole days talking with them before the tournament. That's true. <laughs> with each person. Okay. So, one on one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and this, and this is um, uh, Bobby was saying he thought that Renee was supposed to do commentary. I think it was a rumor at some point. No, um, uh, what's her, Medusa was supposed to do backstage. Oh yeah, commentary. They didn't do that for some reason. Did I don't they know do why. any? No. Did she just came on there for the the special and this they I didn't she, use her? I guess. I don't know if they're doing it for like the later rounds or uh, if it's something they're going to put out afterwards, like they do for like the exclusive. But, yeah, maybe stuff. maybe they're not doing that because everybody had the package, right? Here's this person and her story. Here's this person and her story, and yeah. there was not really room for anybody to kind of do an interview, you know. And it was maybe now that you know who these people are a little bit more, you know, they'll they'll do that for, you know, telling kind of the story going forward. I don't know. So be interesting to see. Um, awesome. Uh, what's up, Daniel? He says, can't wait for Royal Valley September 16th to see you guys. Loved your debut. Absolutely. Who so said this? Out. So that's uh, Daniel Kitchen out there. Oh, right, shut the up, chat. Daniel. Wow. And, just, and we're getting all the likes right now from Brandon. Wow. Lots of them out there. Okay. Oh, all right. I appreciate so, it. So, all right. Uh, we got to get to uh, some more wrestling talk and uh, the big question. And we're going to see if we can buy, <laughs> find, find uh, uh, Billy. Who was supposed to be here tonight? Uh, <laughs> hashtag where's hashtag Billy? Where's yeah. Billy? Maybe we'll <laughs> find him in the break. I will, we'll check. The taco stand I thought was closed. Maybe it he is. took a detour. Maybe maybe he stopped at Slice and knocking on their door. Maybe he grabbed some either. bruise. Mm. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Uh, but in the meantime, speaking of, hey, we supported our friends at Slice on Broadway right here up the street uh, on Broadway on the tracks in uh, Beachview. Not in the middle of the tracks, but, you know, up up the road. <laughs> Just make that clear. Yeah, it'd be a little weird. Supporting yeah, Pittsburgh weird. Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza for several years, feeding our guests coming in the studio. And one more reason for people to come in here and join us as well. Uh, thank you so much for them join, joining us and uh, supporting the shows for a good while now. Uh, you can check them out, like I said, here in Beachview as well as uh, Main Street and Carnegie, PA, and PNC Park, home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. And you can actually get them delivered most of the city on Uber Eats. So throwing that out there, if you're like, hey, I'm not getting any of those neighborhoods, hit up the Uber Eats. I think the, the Postmates does it too as well. Um, so uh, a lot of people getting their slice on. Thank you so much for the guys supporting us. Let them know the Wrestling Mayhem Show sent you sliceonbroadway.com. Uh, we'll be back with uh, a lot more wrestling talk. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at sidekickmediaservices.com. All right, Wrestling Mayhem Show with our guest locked and loaded. Uh, the very, the very suave dressed tag team champions of the international wrestling cartel joining us here in the studio for the show thank you so much wait wait something disappeared back there what's wait there's something missing from behind the couch i yeah. is there there was something we first i mean came we got the current some angle trash there's a sexy talented dudes hanging out there who were number one contenders for your belts last i know and uh but man something's missing what's happening back there we, what we is talking about this trash? Oh, what is? Oh, oh no! Oh is no! Team Storm trash. Team Storm. Oh. They were nice enough to sign that for us. Wow. Like we had to. We had to put that down. Our belts mm, were crazy. more important than that picture. Mm, let me tell you. Crazy. That's unfortunate. <laughs> that, that's oh, that's their. Yep. There it goes. You can put that in, it's in the middle. In the couch with the pizza crumbs. Yep. Ooh, yeah. And go. the cats. Probably where were both the it. what? Cats. No, nothing. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to get the hell. Is there cats in the couch? No, no, there's no cats in the couch. No. I mean, there oh, might okay. be like enough to be a cat in the cat in the couch, but not like a full. A full. Yeah, you know, breathing. I mean, oh, you probably like get some glue and it's. Let's put it back there. Let's put it back face down. There you go. I face. See. Okay. All oh, right. My fault, Kurt. <laughs> Respect. And of course, Larry's here too, hanging out. Hello. Having fun. Still trying to remember May Young classic yeah. names. Yeah. Next week will be easier. It won't be as many names to remember. There's exactly. so many girls. Like, <laughs> exactly. So many There's a lot of girls. Wrestlers, man. It, it, it's the problem of too many girls. You know. Forget their names. <laughs> Larry goes through that a lot, he was telling me. That's right. What's That's that? right. Larry said he forgets a lot of girls' names. <laughs> now, now the dead is left. Now that we can right. admit that. <laughs> uh, it's time for the big question. and uh, make me sleep on the porch. <laughs> Let's hear it. That's okay. We got a couch here. It's for that. And when the shows do go south... You can just sleep on the couch here. You just have an audience with this giant window. So when the, when the sun comes up, it's like, you know, there's people looking in on the tea going by, like, who's that guy on the couch? Why'd they let that homeless person in? 
Dude, this is beach view. They're used to stuff like that. <laughs> I don't, I don't think they're used to what we're doing in here lately. No, no, no. No, they're, they're not. Yeah, you're right. I take no. that back. <laughs> <laughs> I love Beach View. I love Beach View. Seriously, I have a big question. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it's kind of topical, and regardless of how we saw the fight this weekend that we were discussing, um, there was uh, Conor McGregor and Floyd Mayweather, and Floyd Mayweather, a fir- former WrestleMania. Money team. Money, Money team. team. Money team. Gotta get those confession. Get them. Confession. After I got home, I watched the Big Show Floyd Mayweather match Did on the you? network. You know, just for comparison purposes, yeah, yeah, yeah. it was another crossover event, okay. right? Yes. And even you know, Morrow was on the call, which was great. Mm-hmm. You know, kind of a nice comfort zone because when the hell am I going to watch boxing? And uh, you know, I just felt like, oh, it's just something weird and and, and different, like NXT. I'm fine. I'm good. Um, but they mentioned like like uh, uh, Noki and Muhammad Ali. Mm-hmm. When they were talking about these crossover things, so I was like, "Oh, I got to watch the WrestleMania match." Yeah. Anyways, the fight was interesting, uh, definitely entertaining. I don't know if it was a hundred dollars worth, but it was definitely, definitely something. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that was one of the better boxing, like big name boxing matches in a while. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I definitely thought that was better than Floyd Pacquiao. Way better. Which is crazy because if someone would have told me ten years ago Floyd Mayweather and Manny Pacquiao are fighting, I would think that that was the big, biggest thing that could ever happen. Yeah. Then it happened. They were kind of both a little bit older. And so, like, so yeah. I, and I hear this a lot. Like, what happened? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. With with Floyd and Manny? Yeah. It was just boring. I think they just, they did it too late in their careers. Yeah. Um, okay. If, if they would have did it in their, like, early 30s. There's just no excitement to it. Yeah. It's, nah. Another thing is because Manny Pacquiao is slower. Mm-hmm. They used to be a lot mm-hmm. slower, and Floyd just outboxed them. Yeah, basically, and Manny Pacquiao is a powerful guy. And it's like mm-hmm. Floyd didn't, he didn't, he didn't even get close to him to hit him. And Floyd's a defensive fighter, so yeah. he was doing a lot of just bobbing, weaving, waiting for his moments, mm-hmm. picking his shots, like Floyd has been doing for twenty years. But it just, it just happened too late. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> the the biggest thing that happened with Manny Pacquiao is that he got knocked out. By uh, was it uh, Mark? Was it Marquez? I think he's been he's been getting he got knocked out up. right before like, it was like a fight he was doing like a it was like a series of fights and this was the blow off fight basically and he got knocked out mm-hmm. and when he got knocked out like the second that fight with Floyd got pushed back a couple of years because he can't got to build now we got to build Manny Pacquiao back up yeah you got to mm-hmm. get you know you got to. Get Manny Pacquiao back hot. <laughs> and I don't know how you don't do that, but mm-hmm. no one cared. Everyone just wanted to watch it because of the names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But the uh the Connor the Connor and uh Floyd fight was it was a lot of promos, man. It was a lot of interviews mm-hmm. and a lot of I, I was amazed. I hadn't followed it just like, you know, every all the chatter and everything. And I know, you know, watching it is like, oh, you know, you get that like, oh, this is like a wrestling promo kind of thing. And, and, and USC seems to be going more that way, right? Yeah. And and when I was seeing some of this stuff and I was like, wait, did they do that press conference in like an arena or something? And they're like, no, they did four of those. Yeah. yeah. That they did a tour, like a like press a conference tour. tour. It just like, yeah. I'm like, that's insane. Yeah. yeah. Right. But that's that's where we got with this kind of thing. Right. Yeah. It was it was just nuts, but again, it was all that pop and circumstance, you know, like on a different level, even. But, but like what we kind of expect going into a WrestleMania when yeah. we have like our rock scenes and things like that, which leads to our question. Um, a lot of people say, you know, with all you know, hearing Conor McGregor speak, especially going into this fight, and a lot of people were exposed to that. Um, there's the oh, he's you know would be perfect if he. Did a stop in WWE? Did did a Brock Lesnar or something, right? Yeah. So you know, kind of, kind of. Let's 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 pretend that's happening. Okay. Let's say McGregor comes to WWE. Mm-hmm. Who does he have his his feud with that brings him in? It has to be Cena. No way. Cena? It has to be. Yeah. When you, when you like, you don't come in that big a name and go up against Roman Reigns. Like mm-hmm. it has to be. It has to be big on both sides. Something that draws in even the casual fan at that point, right? Yeah, like because if you like if you tell someone who is a MMA fan mm-hmm. that Conor McGregor is going to WD and he's fighting Roman Reigns, you're like, he's fighting who? You tell him he's fighting John Cena. I don't care who you are. You know who John. Cena you know who John Cena is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I would rather not see that kind of to your response, but it has to be a, a big name like that. And, and then Cena is really, really good at kind of hand holding people and, and making the match like go okay, even if it's. They're going to put him his against pace. the heel. Like, you can't book him. You can't book him with Cena and then expect. You can't book him with Cena and expect him to go over on Cena and you know what I mean it's like it's like who are they cheering yeah, for well no I think they book it like they did Cena Rock they put two guys in and you cheer for who you want to cheer for there wasn't mm-hmm. really a dedicated heel or face the fans just kind of chose who they because there's, there's like a hundred pound weight difference though, <laughs> right? oh, yeah. <laughs> you know I mean it's, it's, it would look awkward it's, it's, it's pro like wrestling a, come on I mean it was uh, I mean <laughs> it's like Mysterio going against Cena only Mysterio never wrestled before it's Floyd like, it's like Ford. <laughs> Floyd Fort, uh, Big Show. Big Show. I know, but that, mm. but that, that is. <laughs> but that was booked as like a David and Goliath type thing. All right, well, it's, it's and, the same as Shawn Michaels Big Show versus was meant Triple to H. Be like the be- he was meant mm-hmm. to be the heel, you know? So it's I don't like, know, man. We've seen small guys go against bigger guys before. It would look awkward for sure. So then. But name recognition alone, like, I will mm-hmm. so tune who could in. you see? Uh,. Connor going up against because you have to remember these big promos leading up to the WrestleMania moment. Who's going to go back and forth jabbering with Connor? We just talked about Cena earlier. You. I got you. How about uh, Kevin Owens? I th- as a wrestling fan, I think that'd be really cool. I think mm. the promos would be really cool. But back to my first point: Who the hell is Kevin Owens and from I don't- the outside? And I don't want to like. I think I feel like the obvious answer is Brock, but it's like, well, let's just you do a UFC fight at that yeah. point. Yeah, I guess there's a bit of a way. Yeah, they there's a do. massive yeah, they way. Brock, Brock, Brock would kill him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Brock maybe would, that's like. Kill him. I could see Brock. Yeah, you know what? I probably could. Um, it would bring a lot of attention. It'd bring a lot of attention. Both former UFC champions. Mm-hmm. Um, there, there's it, some. There's, there's some. There's like four weight classes in between them, or something yeah. like. But that. But it will only make sense. At, in a wrestling oh, situation. Oh, yeah. yeah. In WWE. Yeah, it yeah, wouldn't yeah. make sense anywhere else. No, yeah, it couldn't. Um, yeah. I was thinking AJ Styles, but when you brought up the mic thing, I don't yeah, know if AJ so. can go back and forth with Conor I McGregor. I bet he could. Maybe, maybe under certain circumstances, if, if they let AJ curse some more like he did on SmackDown a couple weeks That's ago. That's going to be the hard thing. Is you knew who Connor yes, what I'm curse. saying. Like, yeah, because <laughs> Conor's going <Connor's gonna laughs> to curse. You know who would have been absolutely perfect? Stone Cold. No, not Stone Cold. Even better than Stone Cold. This person would have been the absolute best opponent for Connor. James Ellsworth. (laughs) (laughs) James. I agree. And that is CM Punk. Mm -hmm. Yes. That would have been hands down the greatest thing I would ever see. That Mm -hmm. like the 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 lead up and the promos between those two would be so raw. Like it would feel so real. Maybe it's a reason to come back. Yeah. That well, would be crazy. You know, I think he would come back. For something. I'd pay something like that. That's like something that, really I mean, cool. That's something really. He comes cool. back and becomes the hard, to, the part timer that you know he's complained about. You know that that, that oh could be God. amazing. And the dynamic of him losing in the in that world, mm-hmm. and then coming back to like respond to an open challenge. Yeah, from or, yeah, Gregor yeah. So yeah say, I have, you have to be Connor coming first, and he's mm-hmm. running his mouth. Oh, I've I've conquered UFC. I've stepped in the boxing ring. Blah blah. blah and then and then you know, yeah. CM Punk comes out. That would be <laughs> awesome. Is, is that from? Is that your answer? Okay, uh, producer Missy just threw up a big sign that says The Rock. The Rock. I, I can th- see that. I can see that <laughs> from a. Uh, I mean, from a a a cross promotional like that is like that would be obscene it money would be obscene you drop that at a SummerSlam or a wrestlemania it the rock could sell would. that too he definitely mm. could <laughs> you know if, and, if, and the rock especially most recently looks absolutely badass yeah you know gray yeah. beard now oh i didn't see this you didn't i'm i'm sorry i'm watching ballers That's oh, where I'm at. oh no yeah like oh, he's you, huge he's huge yeah, but if yes. you like like check him Best. on like instagram and stuff he's, he like letting his beard grow out. out and it's literally like a gray it looks is ridiculous. it like Jimmy Vegas style? It's like yeah, it's like a peppery yeah. black and gray. Yeah, hmm? it's colored kind of like yours. It's, the, it's like pepper. oh, it's got this yeah, yeah. pepper in salt and pepper. A little, mm. it's it's oh, pretty cool. Yeah. Devil now. Yeah, my big thing with Connor though, like I keep thinking of this because I thought about him going to the WWE. I actually made a post on Facebook about it. Um, is he would have to tone down his his promos and the way he talks? Yeah, and. Think about Conor McGregor and the way he talks leading up to a fight. Now take out all the F-bombs. You don't have anything. What do you have? 
Yeah. Mm. <laughs> it's it's a little. I mean, obviously WWE, they're, they're, I feel like they'd be, they'd be a little lenient with him, but they're not going to be yeah, F bomb. Sit on that button. Drop F-bomb. Just sit on that button. <laughs> yeah. Sit on that button and get the uncut version on WWE yeah, Network with the t- TVMA. Like I, I and I feel like he would either. He would have been great in the Attitude Era. Yeah. 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 He would have been hey, great in the Attitude Era. You know what? For you it. know what? Sell subscriptions. Having an uncensored interview of Conor McGregor on WWE Network. That'd be awesome. Right. S- Stone Cold. Hell, the interview. Oh, so oh, that interview. Oh my god, that'd be awesome. That'd be great. It feels like they barely hold, hold him back whenever he's on a live. Right, like these well, days. I don't these think days. he cares. Yeah, or, you know, like, he's gonna just say, "What are you gonna do to me?" Or, or <laughs> you know, as soon as he's back on his feet, he's doing better. But let's just uh, get a drunk Ric Flair and just let him at it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just? <laughs> He's he's, he's, he's tweeting. Just stuff. lift the man up, then drop him down. <laughs> they, they said he's walking around now. He's, he's like, walking he's around. Walking he's already hitting on the nurses. It's you know, I mean, it's, I mean, it's inevitable. I mean, he's gonna live forever. He is. Yeah, he's gonna outlive like you guys starting now. I mean, just, oh, it's just inevitable, right? Yeah, he's sure. gonna be I mean, that head in the jar in Futurama. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ric Flair can't leave us. <laughs> And still, and still, still, doing good still the man, still the man, still wearing a suit somehow with that, right? Yeah. From the chat room, uh, right. Brandon's got a couple suggestions out there. He says uh, McGregor Orton. Mm. Okay. Mm. I don't like that mesh. No, mm. no, I love no. Randy Orton, but I just don't. Somebody said The Miz. No. That was a good one. Mm-hmm. It'd be mm. The Miz. The Miz. The Miz on the mic, the right? Mike right? wise, yeah. He'd be a good one to get his butt kicked. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if you just need like... A big show Akibono situation where mm-hmm. somebody just needs to get their ass kicked to get you know for an attraction. Yeah, it's, Miz, it's the Miz. Miz is perfect because he can jaw with him leading up to the big fight yeah. and then just get destroyed. Because Connor is going to be what the baby face then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. he has to come in baby face. Yeah. Oh jeez, Tom's out there saying McGregor and Shane O'Mac. Mm-hmm. I don't know about that. <laughs> um, I don't know about I don't think WWE that. has a big enough heel. To like to bring him in and Bobby Roode, mm. he's not a heel though. Well, yeah, he can be. I think, he, I think he's he can turn he can back down. He, he could be a heel with one interview. He can. Be. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Cor- Corbin, Corbin, or no. Baron Corbin. No. I'm sorry. Every time I see Corbin by itself, I think Corbin no. Dallas. Um, but uh, Corbin, all these all these names you're saying, I just picture McGregor's face and their face on a marquee for WrestleMania. And if it doesn't look good to me, I just don't think that. Yeah, what looks good on the outside of the uh, Silver Dome? No, Super Dome. Wait, which one's in New Orleans? Super. Super I just pulled a whole Silver, Silver so Dome's sorry. Detroit. So yeah. it's, okay, the Michigan guy's got it. Thank you. Yep. Uh, <laughs> yes? I have to chime in because we've got a comment. Give her a mic. Give her a mic. Give her a mic. Get she that over there. a mic. We've, we've got a over. comment oh. from the Twitter. Okay. Um, oh, no. We got lots of faces. and oh, wow. Spiker, Spiker is saying Enzo Amore. Whoa, Enzo! He's just well. They're about the same size, right? They, they are. are the I think size. Enzo would be a good like pit stop for Connor. Yeah, like he's like he's like building up for this big fight, and then Enzo kind of interjects himself, like, go back and forth, and he you know beats his ass real quick. John Cena is probably the best one. He set. has to be good job. Man. I feel like it has to be right. Yeah, uh, that's Bobby's, a huge. Bobby's throwing Sheamus out there. No, I feel no. like Sheamus would be like rallying behind him. I, oh, that'd be great! Because he both, was like, yeah, he was like his dude, Celtic warrior, yeah. right? Yeah, that ha- they'd have to be on good terms. I feel like that's his only oh, support. Yeah. So, 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 kind of think. Um, um, oh, who team Neville and Stephen Amell? Okay. Oh, okay. Maybe that's not a great example. No, but, but, but I, but I mean saying. that like this is my wrestler backup bringing me in, right? Yeah, right. So now you got to think like, okay, who's kind of the other side of Sheamus? Maybe. Well. Bobby actually just chimed in, and I literally had this thought before I just saw it in the chat room. Finn Balor. I think it'd be... Mm, that would be interesting. Mm. It would be interesting. Size-wise, I feel like with with, with Connor, obviously he's going to have to you know learn some wrestling leading up to this. Right. And I feel like what he does learn is just not going to be advanced enough for Finn to be able to do anything like, cool. Or That's does, my problem with uh, Shayna Baszler. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're, like, you're, pair- with you're paired with someone full and, circle. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you're paired with someone, and then they have to yeah kind of play down yeah. because yep. of who they're up. I mean, it sucks, but <laughs> you obviously you can't. Right. Connor can't go in there and hang with like AJ Styles. No, no he definitely he couldn't. can't do it. Yeah, but, but I think AJ, AJ could carry him. AJ, AJ could. Carry he him. could. 
Um, but I, I think that would be a little tougher because the guys at AJ face at least had wrestling. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like they yeah, wasn't yeah. thrown into this thing. So, so um, I, I, I think we're going a different direction with this. But Maybe Daniel Pewter. <laughs> Tina's. T- Daniel Pewter. There you go. We're going back. We resurrected, resurrected by The Undertaker. You know, thrown into another popcorn machine. Missy has something. Missy has something. Actually, Bobby Snyder has something. Okay, you're calling these interesting ones that are out there? Connor versus Asuka. Oh, my, oh my God. God. She would, <laughs> he would be destroyed. Yeah. Well, she yeah, would yeah. kill him. Yeah. She would kill him. I love that we're like, Asuka would kill him. Yeah. In a sure. wrestling ring? He would get she destroyed. She would kill him. Yeah. For sure. She'd beat him broken with a broken collarbone. And uh, Tina's throwing out Cedric Alexander. Mm. Mm. Who said that? Uh, Tina. Oh. Mm. I'm thinking, I feel like it had to be, it has to be Brock or Cena. And if you have Brock, then you just basically have Paul Heyman and Connor going back and forth, which would be awesome. Brock doesn't have to say anything, and then their match can be. I can't imagine those two standing in one, like in front of each other, like just how small he'd look. Because Connor's a Con- small guy, he, would he look, is, but he he's so small. his his confident level yeah. is he'd so look tall. small compared to um, Finn Balor, and he's not the biggest of dudes. Oh, and here's another know? thing, like like Finn at least weighs almost two hundred pounds. He's over two hundred pounds. He's yeah. like two twenty or something Finn, like that. Yeah, Connor's one fifty five, yeah. and, and maybe it's an unfair scale, but think of Floyd and Connor. And then watch WrestleMania <laughs> with him and Big Show, and and I know that like he's going to look super tiny next to the Big Show, but he's kind of normal person size, right? Yeah. So so it so, makes the other person. Look. So so now picture Gregor in Floyd spot next to the Big Show, and I guess he's I'm trying like I'm two, trying to create a scale like for extra, everybody. Like two or three inches on. Floyd. Right, right, but it's not enough to kind of. Uh, Mike's going it away. Still from looks you. the same. There you go. Well, I was Missy. just going to say that I actually looked up some some weights over here. Finn Balor is one ninety hmm. to one fifty four for Colin McGregor. Yeah. Oh, so he would still dwarf him a little bit. Yeah, well, and that's not his natural weight though. He did he did cut to yeah, to box. Uh, so he Floyd. So he's probably like one seventy. A comfortable 170. Yeah, but that's still not <laughs> heavy. It's yeah. perception. I know. That's, that's light for cruiserweights. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> size wise, it, it definitely would look weird. You know what? Just, just Connor's on 205 Live. Let's just, just roll with it and. Neville. Neville. Have to oh, be Neville. Yeah. Wow. If he's yeah. on 205, yeah. it has to be Neville. Yeah. yeah. There you go. They, they got is that Connor, whole like, England Ireland yeah. thing going on. Is Connor yeah. on the Neville level? Mm. He wouldn't have to be. No. Because Neville doesn't do anything. He doesn't do his super, super uh, cruiserweight heel. stuff now. No. He, it's all ground and pound. A little bit. Like, he does, yeah, he yeah, does his Brock Lesnar stuff. His yeah. little Lesnar yeah. stuff. It's all ground and pound. So I think <laughs> if they go that way and then he goes up for something big and gets caught like he does, he did with uh, when he lost the belt the first time. To Tazawa? One time he lost. Tazawa? Yeah. He missed that and then Tazawa went up and hit his thing. Mm-hmm. If it was something like that, he went up, he got caught. McGregor got him in a, I don't know, some now, now something. Now floodgates of, uh, of Jack Gallagher. And I mean, that would, <laughs> this would be amazing if that's what they want with it. I would, who would you like to but see? Where would you put that at on a, sh- on a WrestleMania show? Because it has to be WrestleMania. Hey, it gets 205 live over. It's, it, but the, I mean, the okay, the real business of it, it is going to happen on Raw. Because it's a Raw property with 205 live. Right? Yeah. The cruiserweights are Raw. Yeah. So that makes sense. That would, that he's would not the, showing up on a Tuesday night, I doubt. He's no. not going to be on a pre-show either. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> and I don't so, honestly think he'd be involved with 205 Live. He's that no. polarizing oh, figure. He's, you take the guy from 205 Live, but you don't put them on 205 Live. No. You can call it cruiserweights, but 205 but, Live becomes the main event of the cruiserweights at that time. I think whenever you're... you're pop- superstars. Yeah, 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 I feel like your popularity gets to a certain point where your weight doesn't matter. You look at... Shawn Michaels, he's a cruiserweight. Yeah. When you look at it, right. I mean, he's a small guy, but well, because of who he was and how he carried himself, mm-hmm. that, that's a heavyweight champion. In in a time where there was a lot more small guys, so he didn't stick out right. as much until he's like fighting Vader or something. Yeah. So I don't know. Or Razor. wait, 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 wait. When Shawn Michaels was wrestling, it was a lot of little. It was a little a little guy thing. I thought yes, when he was uh, fighting, he was fighting against Razor Ramon, okay, Diesel, Sid, Vader. I thought guys got the other guy that was his on. size was Bret Hart. Yeah, I feel like as it got on, well, they got yeah, smaller. as Bret we're talking Hart. about like Steve, close Austin, to two thousand around his size. And, Steve Austin is six like, three, six four, two fifty. 
He's a husky he's guy. Like six five. Mm. No, he's like six, six two. two. He's like six but, three, six. But in my he's, mind, he's not a short but he guy. Can, and maybe he doesn't project big compared to other people next to him. Like Sean's say, tiny. Sean though. is tiny. He's like though. six one. I think body generous. wise, like I think it is. I'm not sure, but I know for the fact when during that time, you, you, if you're talking about attitude era, maybe it was a lot more guys his size. Mm-hmm. But previous to that. Razor Ramon was Razor even says like I I had to bump for him because no one else would, mm-hmm. no one else would sell for this guy because he's small. I now, feel like now small guys are a lot more acceptable. I feel like guys yeah, like Benoit and Guerrero and Jericho and the Rascals, yeah, the Radicals, and, and I mean. Daniel Bryan, they kind of made it okay for not the huge guy to be the mm. the one. So that alone, I feel like could make a guy. Connor's size, you mm-hmm. know, be okay to fight John Cena or the Big Show know. or the Big Show. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at last night's show and uh, I was like, gosh, like John's forearm is huge. Mm-hmm. He's yeah, he's massive. He's, <laughs> His forearm, he was pointing. I was like, that was a that's gigantic. a mean point right mm-hmm. there. But uh, like that, his forearm is about the same size as McGregor, though. He his wears a body. he wears a headband on his bicep. Yeah. yeah, like, <laughs> and it's not like not loose. No. That's going on a little kid's head. Like, right. put yeah. that in context. That's right? going on yeah. my head. <laughs> yeah, like, he's a big guy. It's not a small human being. <laughs> All right, hey, we got a Billy Johnson. So I, I guess sort of an update, or at least a last scene. Um, apparently, um, at Black Time in this past weekend, I, I'm sad I didn't get out because I would have loved to witness this. Um, apparently, um, axe murderer Jake Garrett, friend of the show, uh, threw Corey Futuristic over the railing at BDW. And uh, uh, into the chest of Billy Johnson, who did not kn- not, did not move, says says Ken in the chat. As in, like, not that he didn't move, but like Corey bounced off of him, and then they continue fighting into the second row. Um, so, but he seems okay. So I don't know. Maybe he's having some flash to the future with Curie Futuristic or something from the <laughs> incident. I don't know, but uh, just just that's the that's our last uh, reported. Uh, instance with uh, so Billy come back to us from the future wherever you are <laughs> you say you got future dust on him <laughs> <laughs> just is sprinkled that, in his hair I, I mean it, it, it must be because so. Billy is missing mm-hmm. stripper dust you just take a shower or something and a shot yeah. I, you know I, hey, I don't know what Corey's coming out with these days so you know and, and he's number one contender you guys got a face so you better look, you better look into that. contenders are. You better look into that. Don't forget contenders. That's hilarious. Oh, uh, we're twelve ten. <laughs> wait, is that what? you're added? That's our height together. That's our height. We're twelve feet ten inches. Yeah, we're not worried about a Corey no. futuristic. Corey futuristic. Who's tag partner? <laughs> Chess Joe? flexor. Chess flexor. Okay. Oh my goodness. Yeah. I think we got his portrait. Right oh there. man. Yeah, yeah. Those guys right behind you, right there. The sexy, talented dude. Oh, yeah, Chess, man. Yeah, man. He's a, cool. he's a great guy. I beat him up over at BDW. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, we're not worried about this. The, so, no more yeah. contenders. We, anyway. No, we're about these belts leaving our waist nope. anytime soon. Nope. Nope. Um, we, had a, we had kind of a conversation come up uh, um, between uh, on the break here, uh, again, about the Mae Young Classic. Um, and uh, I guess there was some bad stuff on the internet because I mean I couldn't imagine the internet at this point <laughs> what I this is un- so unbelievable I mean you guys have a great time on the internet right yeah, yeah so I love it no every problems. day it's no problems at all get never. giddy I've never had anything bad on my Twitter uh-uh. <laughs> well you have to tweet something okay okay <laughs> um, anyways <laughs> There was a, a you know kind of a standout you know uh, we were talking kind of the monsters the bigger people you know in 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 uh, the Mae Young Classic and Piper Nevin, ne- Ivan Nevin 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 I think I got that one still learning the names too um, you know she's kind of a bigger girl and I guess you said there was it was uh yeah well there, there was some stuff going on on the internet with her yeah they were like uh, body shaming her basically like yeah. telling her like this is I can't believe she's on television mm-hmm. looking like this and I can't believe what is this who is this person and that's bashing her mm-hmm. uh, I didn't I didn't know about the bashing part until I saw that she posted a picture of and I was like why did she just post that picture then I start reading like that I started doing some research and I saw like people are like. 
commenting heavy on what she looks like and saying uh, we need to start holding ourselves more accountable to our weight and this, that, and the third. Like, Americans are this. And, and I was like, she's man, this, Scottish. I, it was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> she's from Scottland. She's from worried about the. Yeah, they obviously didn't care about where she was from. Um, but. I would, that's the picture right there. If you scroll okay, down, this, yeah. This is the response post. Yeah, that was the response. All right, we'll bring. The, I think I can bring this up for you guys on the video. So this is the one. Uh, it seems I'm ca causing quite a stir. Thanks so much for the love and support. It's amazing for the minority of nasty people sucking. And then she kind of just has a kind of selfie, um, you know, your, your underwear picture, I guess. Um, so there you go. Um, yeah, and, and I kind of, when I saw her on the roster, I'm just like, okay, there's going to be some bad stuff comes out from this, right? Because the internet. Um, and that's unfortunate. Um, but, but good for WWE for including her. Like, because, you know, we talk about, like, WWE has a body type, you know, and, 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 and everything. And, and, and especially with the girls in the Divas era, mm -hmm. you know, it was just like it felt like, okay, what blonde Barbie is wrestling this week? Right. Yeah. And, and to get that... We do have such a varied representation on this tournament, including Piper is great. And by the way, she, for a bigger person, she can go. Yeah, you know. she kicked ass. Yeah. So <laughs> That's all you have to do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, like, yeah. Yeah. She, you can go. She can work. <laughs> That's all that matters, man. It, it really it doesn't matter because it, it's it's like like Kevin Owens. Like I was just about to say Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, and, you know, there's, there's people that we've had on this show and it says, you know, I can't buy Kevin Owens because he doesn't look like a wrestler to him. It just looks like a guy off the street. He definitely does. Yeah. But when you see, when that bell rings, you know he's not a guy off the street. Right. You know, he can go better than all the, the, the smaller guys we were saying. So The guy's lie on his feet and I don't does know. a great I've, job. I've never seen him blown up in the ring noticeably. No. You know? Nia Jax is another one. Like she's she's not a small girl either, you know. And no, she's like she's like six one. Yeah, she's she's not a small girl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, no, absolutely. So I mean it, it, it's kind of, you know, as long as you know, it's a body shape, it's a body type, it's be genetics. Um and well even even Nia was a um a plus size model yeah. going into this. Yeah, you know, when she, when she, she joined wrestling. So, you know, as long as they can go in the ring, I think you can do some interesting stuff with that. Yeah. The internet, man. <laughs> Who it's, knew the internet was going to suck? Man, the internet, man. And it strikes again. I just think it's funny when people, like, say certain things and you look at, the, like, their profile picture. Because this yeah. is what I do. I just look at their profile picture and I just laugh. Yeah, like, I'm like, oh, you're the one talking. Oh, it's this guy. <laughs> yeah. just, don't, just don't accidentally say anything about a uh, somebody from the Army like Corbin did at one time. Yeah, he so, may not even want to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got watched. Is that. that why he's getting pushed down the car now? I don't know. I think I think the problem is this trend of things he's saying on the on on Twitter. They were saying um, that, and like I guess Cena buried him or something backstage. After Cena the buried match. him. Supposedly he's he's picking fights and blocking other people Hardy on the roster. People. I guess. Yeah. And yeah. Sometimes you just gotta stay off that social media. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some people aren't great with it. We used to judge Matt Hardy back in the day. And now he's kind of a master at it. He's a miss. Took him a while. I, I don't think he's. Is, he might not be running his account though. Oh no, he's running. His I bet account. he. I bet he's got the same guy as Virgil. No. <laughs> <laughs> don't get me started on those guys. Don't get me started on those guys. Don't get your lady started on those guys. Jeez, um, we've had too many social media classes on this about that. So, uh, anyways. So at that point, I think we've we've covered we've solved all the problems of pro wrestling on this show. So thank you so much, uh, everybody, for joining us for that. What did you learn from wrestling this week? Not to mess with John Cena when he has a microphone. <laughs> That's what I learned. Step back from him. Yeah. When he, yeah. Just just let him just let him do his thing. He's been on top of the mountain for a while, and mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't seem like he's going anywhere. <laughs> You know what I've learned from wrestling? Let's hear this, Duke. What did you learn? I learned twofold. One is that Sean Phoenix loves, when I say love, loves flying through the air. Okay. Loves it. At BW, oh, I saw that video. He was on the top rope and someone freaking shoved him 90 yards into a table. Mm hmm. You learned that this week. I learned that he loves <laughs> just to fly. 
That's his thing. He's a fan. He loves fire and flying. Fire and flying, man. Flying. And I guess that's what a phoenix does. That's what he does. I mean, he loves it and crashes and he loves it. <laughs> he loves the entire process. The whole thing. The man. flying, the crashing. The second thing I learned is that you cannot take anything for granted. Life for granted. Uh, we lost someone very close. Uh, Trey Garcia, and uh, definitely appreciate everything uh, he did for us as far as even just uh, coming to us and talk to us at IWC shows. We weren't supposed to be there. Yeah. And <laughs> and uh, he was a big proponent of us coming there. So definitely. rest easy, Trey. Yes. Definitely. R.I.P. Uh, Larry. Um, I learned. So, sorry, you have to follow that up. Yeah, <laughs> that was a great one. Uh, I feel like you should have won last. Yeah, should have won last. Yeah. I got nothing. I'm gonna pass. <laughs> I can't follow that. No, 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 no. Um, yeah, so, and and uh, if you guys are listening afterwards, we're dedicating the show, of course, to uh, um, Tregar. Uh, he's a big. We still have the signs up here in the studio. Uh, Sean Michaels is a Mad Mike guy uh, there behind uh, Gannon and uh, and then and, and some other stuff. So uh, definitely. It's thoughts on us. Um, it's uh, it's good, you know. Great to see um, what uh, wrestling's brought together. You know, friends made. You know, uh, and uh, and that was a perfect example of that. So you know, definitely gonna miss Tragar and his blog <laughs> and his Loved signs. It. Loved it and everything. So um, so it makes me appreciate so much more his uh, uh, when he was moving out of here. His uh, bit of tour that he did on the way out uh, and, and everything. So thank you so much, Trey. We're thinking of you. Um, we have we have some more things. And these unfortunate people that have to follow out. Somebody, vo- somebody left a voicemail. What? <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they called? Yeah, yeah. No, we have, we, no, not during the show. Oh, but oh, it, oh, like sure. earlier in the day. We have a hotline. I, oh, said, really? I said at the beginning of the show, 412-206-WMS0. You can call any time if you have something to say. I'm gonna start oh, calling in. You put it on your, you put it on your things. Be like, hey, you know, give us our, our um, what our, our weekly Duke update or however you want to. Do. What? Duke of the week. Duke of the week. <laughs> what Wait, I hate of the week. Hold up. <laughs> what the hell happened to me? <laughs> I don't know. He's the one interested in the phone number. The all star. You can Duke pick an all star every week. There you go. Who's the all star in go. your eyes? Gannon's all star. Duke of the week. <laughs> Man, I'm about to get the hell out of here. <laughs> you about to just be locked. I know, just loaded is leaving. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll negotiate off air. But anyway. Hey, what, was this, what was his voicemail? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Daniel Tyree, uh, is, uh, or as I like to call him, Daniel, Daniel Tiger, because Google Voice is uh, great at translating things. Uh, but uh, he learned a couple of things. One of them, uh, and, and I, I've been telling you this every time I see it, that apparently uh, Seamus and Cesaro watch a lot of Dragon Ball Z. Because they're completely doing the fusion dance okay. when they come out there. I think it's more of that. I know it looks kind of NWO y, but there's Do like their fingers this, touch. They're, 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 most of the times, yes. Yeah, sometimes they miss. Okay. Because that is definitely a fusion. Yeah. Definitely a fusion. There you go. So if you want to picture what uh, a, saying. Uh, it's a Trunks Goten type. So picture like like Cesaro, with the goatee, or not the goatee, the, the, the hair. You know the, the the red mohawk, the red mohawk thing in, going in on in the new days Some WrestleMania uh, gimmick. Oh, they did come out with the Ginyu Force stuff. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, the cereal box. Yeah. I think there's a giant anime faction happening backstage. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> I mean, everybody's playing video games. Everybody's watching but Dragon I mean, Ball that's Z. That's all wrestlers are usually. They're digging yeah. on that Death Note movie on nerds. Netflix. Probably, I don't know. I haven't seen it yet. If it's any good, I didn't hear good reviews. No, I didn't either. Yeah. I liked it. Did you? Yeah. I want to watch it. I did, I'm not used to... I'd never watched the anime before. Okay. So that might have something Clean to do. Clean slate. Yeah. Just but like, I got so no problem with Game of Thrones. I, I enjoyed it. They shot it like they used to shoot like movies back in the 90s, you know? Okay. Like, just the, the progression. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll have to check it, was, it out. It was, it was gory. All right. It was definitely <laughs> movie mayhem <laughs> show, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's um, on my list, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's on mine, too. Uh, Bobby learned that Oscar was injured and he was devastated, a broken collarbone during uh, takeover, of course. And I think we're going to learn um, kind of the result of that, I think, on NXT this week. So I didn't want to get a spoiler for you, Guy. 
for you guys. Uh, but that's that's all over the news that, that she was injured. Uh, Brandon learned that Kevin Owens doesn't like referees. Yeah, there's <laughs> definitely a problem with that. I don't either. Although him coming. You don't like referees. You no, know, you have a problem with referees? Yeah, yeah, I don't really like them. He does yeah. like Aiden English, though. He does it. He does like Aiden English? He didn't He didn't power bomb him. No, he didn't. Him no, he didn't. He's like, no. oh, my God, problem. I just need leave. a moment. Sorry for your singing. Um, also, uh, as I learned that, and we're talking about this in general, but I love that Raw and SmackDown has each have, have a musical act now between the Drifter and, I noticed that. and Aiden. Mm. Yeah. I think the Drifter is a lot better, though. Oh, yes. Yeah. 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 Drifter is a lot better. Shout out to the Drifter. Lice. Gotta get that shirt. Gotta get that tour shirt, right? Yeah. Uh, represent it. Pittsburgh's on that list on the back, too. Better be. <laughs> Well, it um, makes sense. <laughs> Bobby, Bobby also learned, and there's a visual aid here, and I don't know how I'm going to describe this for you guys on audio, but uh, he learned that uh, um, you don't talk to Brock Lesnar's sons um, as illustrated in toy form here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there is a big Brock, and then there's a, a, a kid Brock, and then there's a baby Brock. Okay. And, and for some reason, they're hanging out with... Jon with Snow? Kit. No, is that John Snow? I thought it was Roman Reigns. I think it's Seth Rollins. No, that's Seth Rollins. Oh. <laughs> John <Okay>. Snow <laughs> Rollins. I thought that was John Snow and Khaleesi. What? Oh my God! What? Why? My eyes. Why don't? So why don't you talk to him? I don't. I. I don't know. Is this? He's. I don't know what's happening okay. with Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Anymore. He's. he's talking <laughs> is to Bobby him. okay? He's. We gotta check on Bobby now. He's the next one. We gotta. This is the mayhem check-in um, yeah. service. Oh, just so something. call four one two two six WNZ to me at zero and let us know you're okay. Yeah, give us a ring. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it's it's like right. our our Facebook disaster relief, but Apparently, just for the mayhem Bobby's nation. Bobby's devastated because Oscar got injured. He's like really hurt. Like he, he is shell shocked. Oh, he no, is. That's a different Bobby. Is that a different Bobby? There's no, more than one Bobby. That was Bobby. Yeah. yeah Bobby. Okay. He's going through a lot. I'm used mm-hmm. to his Twitter name. <laughs> through a lot of stuff lately. No, no, that's his. That's his real name, Larry. I know. You don't know anything about not real names. Nope. Uh, Dave learned. Dave in there learned that uh, you need three sets of sunglasses when you are on the case with the fashion police. That's a good learn. Um, also, I'm afraid of black lights when the fashion police do a segment. That too. was hilarious. I was I was worried about where that was that was going to go. Did you guys see that? Did not. No. Did not see that. There's, there's you gotta check it out, man. It was so funny. Fast police. You learn a lot. You yeah, learn a lot. Like, like the difference between a belt and a title. Yeah. <laughs> In case you didn't know. Um, but uh, and there is, think, there, is there is a difference. There is a difference. There is a difference. But there you go. And thank you everybody who uh, participated. Thank you. Locked and loaded. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having us again. We appreciate uh, it. It was a pleasure talking Thank with you. Us. Thank you for your insight, especially some of the news. I think it was perfect to talk with you guys here this week. Right. Um, IWC Tag Team Champions. Check them up. Uh, check them out. Of course, upcoming at IWC's Rumble in Royal Valley on, I believe that is September 16th. 16th, that's right. So mm-hmm. sorry if mm-hmm. you were going to the Juggalo March. Go there instead. Um, mm. There you go. Definitely come out and see us. Yeah, definitely. Oh. In comparison, it's a don't think it's going to go up for the juggalo we're way okay. more lit than juggalos yeah for sure oh, it, juggalos marching not as not as exciting mm-hmm. but anyways <laughs> um and see who they get to beat up are you guys in, i think there's a battle royal isn't there Something? i would assume it's a know, royal it's a, no it's not a battle royal it's, it's a royal it's rumble it's a royal rumble like that has been announced right it's like, a royal rumble not I a battle i want to make sure royal. i'm not in the private feed when i'm, I'm getting this news no, that's, uh, <laughs> that's legit it is a legit a, royal rumble so you guys gonna like big show that thing? And, Look, uh, are you coming out to the show? Well, I'm filming the show. All right, well, then we're, gonna <laughs> see, we're gonna see what's gonna happen. Gonna I, mean, what's gonna I don't know if Deuce gonna yell at me again because it seems like every time I have a camera, I, I get or a jack. I don't like people with cameras. <laughs> I've noticed. So that's but what I do. So if you want to put that camera, there on you me. go. I know. I know. Like he's okay camera ready. That. Or if I'm wearing a Jackson Argus shirt at, at ringside, you don't. Oh, you don't. But do if I that. have the camera do wearing a Jackson Argus shirt, what happens now? Oh, then you got a lit situation. He's mm-hmm. gonna be there. I'm gonna be there. You, I don't know how it's gonna end, but Larry, would you like to film IWC next month? No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> sure wouldn't. I can't give you. I'll, I'll watch it in the crowd though. Okay. There you go. At a safe distance. I mean, me to later, Larry on the Twitter. Tweet him. He probably won't tweet you back. I might. You never know. You never know. Maybe I'll start Twitter. You might be that lucky fan. Oh. Mm. No. Uh, where can people one. find you guys online? We're all over the place. You have a lot of places. <laughs> We're all over the place. We have we 
Go ahead. Just tell them everything we're on. Everything. Yeah. What, All the things. You got the list, right? If you're on Twitter, it's at locked, the letter N, loaded, underscore. Mm-hmm. If you're on Instagram, it's at we are locked and loaded. Mm-hmm. Spell the whole thing out. The whole thing. Don't you miss a letter. On Facebook, you can, hey, be our friends. Like our page. We have an athlete page. It's called Locked and Loaded. <laughs> Uh, Everything's so aptly named. It's perfect. Uh, you can check out our website. We are locked and loaded. Dot wordpress. Dot com. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm missing something. I don't think. And then we have our individual page. But that's not what matters. That's Instagram? not what matters. You got Instagram. We do have an Instagram. Yeah, we do Instagram. Have it. Yeah. yeah. Says, yeah. At we locked are locked and loaded, and loaded on Instagram. It's we might need. To, we might need to uh, get a Snapchat out there. We need oh no! Oh no! Is they it just, is it just going to be you guys with puppy faces? Because no. that's. <laughs> Well, we're definitely gonna wear some flower crowns too. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Clearly. Oh yeah. Just like just chilling with the dancing hot dog, right? Yes. Or become the dancing hot dog. Oh Ooh. oh oh. Ooh, well, who knows? Tune in. We're gonna launch that uh, this next week. We got a lot of stuff to launch. Yeah, we got our Snapchat coming soon. Yeah. There you go. So and be on the lookout for that. Stay tuned if you're on the live stream or uh, in a few weeks here on the Indie Mayhem show because we're going to talk about talk to them about their social media marketing plan apparently. Mm, yeah. you know, I'm That's curious. Right. Oh, we this. got a, a nice chart for yeah. that. <laughs> <me>. Nice spreadsheet. <laughs> nice Which is spreadsheet. like the, the locked and loaded. Like I just like, like, like just hanging you know, in front of the whiteboard and mapping everything out. Mm-hmm. And That's pretty much how it goes. There you go. <laughs> uh, and thank you, Producer Missy, for keeping all this together. The Office Champion. You're going to have to watch Awesome Cast to know what that's about. Um, or, or see the pictures on my Twitter here very soon. Uh, and thank you to our chat room. Great chat room tonight. Bobby, Dave. Brandon, Tina, uh, and everything else has popped in throughout the night. Um, there was a thank you, everyone, clap, clap, clap in the in the chat room, and a very, very, very appreciative from uh, Dave out there. Um, and we'll see you guys next time. Mayhem out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.